you high. Alrighty, folks, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your very late night. Probably almost early morning. Maybe it might be late at a day by the time this video uploads. Raw <sighs> review. Oh, I'm very tired. I meant to upload this. I meant to record earlier, but just, you know, I was tired. Um, uh, yeah, it's time for your late, whatever, raw review. Um, I, I was worried I was not going to be able to do a video because for some reason, I got a strike on one of my videos. Something about, uh, I think a video I made back in 2021 from SummerSlam about some guy named DJ Valentino Khan or something. So for some reason that video got flagged down for cyberbully and harassment, which is like, how the fuck is that cyberbully and harassment? But then the video was back up. Just got restricted, so I guess like YouTube was just being stupid. Or some fucking stupid knucklehead tried to take me down. I don't fucking know. So... Yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm able to record videos and still upload them no matter what. So we're still good people. So I was like worried about that because I don't want to have to worry about my channel having a fucking strike or whatever. And if you are trying to fucking flag my videos, one of you people out there, go fuck yourself. You're a hipper. You're, you're a fucking coward. Um, anyway, so Raw happened. Raw was very fucking boring. Okay. Very boring. I, I I don't know. I don't know what to really say. Nothing happened on the show. And just, oh, wow, get it? A bunch of gay qualifiers happen. Like, I don't give a fuck about these qualifier matches for these chamber matches. I don't care a fuck about these. Plus, Elimination Chamber seems like a fucking throwaway pay-per-view that they're doing in fucking Australia. Like, come on, man. Um, yeah. Anyways, grab your Coca-Cola's. Bring my nipsling. Spot me some bitches go, oh shit, oh shit, okay. Oh shit, oh shit, cheers, motherfucker, cheers. It's good stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm tired. Ah, so, yeah. I don't know what to really say about this show. The show just, it's just whatever, you know? So the show started with actually a match, you know? So Jey Uso and The New Day uh, defeated Imperium. So that leads to like Jey Uso is going to get a title shot next week on Monday Night Raw. Why do they, uh, I don't know. Every time. They always do these fucking stupid tag matches. I mean, not just that. It's like... Well, I'm talking about uh, Gunter. Gunter always having... like It's like he's the TV champion instead of being a fucking champion that defends the title on paper. He's like... What the fuck? And apparently I get it that apparently he's not allowed to be in Australia, but it's, like, it's still stupid, you know what I mean, folks? Still fucking stupid. We get we then get a recap of the kickoff uh, WrestleMania uh, forty kickoff from Las Vegas. It's all right, you know. Obviously, uh, like it's just you know, if only we got shit like that on TV, you know, instead of fucking watching on YouTube, you know. We get an Andrade vignette. Who the fuck cares? Second match: Bobby Lashley defeated Bronson Reed. I guess I'm happy Lashley won, but I don't really care at the same time. I was thinking that for some fucking reason they're going to have Lashley lose this pass because carrying Cross, But they didn't do anything with that. So, so much for this fucking carrying Cross feud. Um, we then see a sit-down interview with Sami Zayn again with Nakamura. Jack me was like, Sammy, thanks so much for agreeing to do this follow-up last week. You just have to know that you are the contender to become a champion. But since you then, you lost your match to SmackDown to qualify to Elimination Chamber. So what's going to go on? Good? So you're going to do with Nakamura. I mean, how she can uh, the, uh, have confidence right now? And Sammy's so like, well, look, I, uh, you know, if you think that I talk about being any contender in sporting athlete, uh, and uh, to talk about being uh, something, something, anything. 
uh, you know, they always come short and they're feeling embarrassed. But, you know, if I say that I'm going to be too McIntyre and I don't be too McIntyre, then I'm going to be a part of that embarrassment. That, but who wants to crawl into bed and doesn't want to show up to work next week. It's something that I felt like many times in my career, if I believe you all, is that every single time, just to prove it, like I had that felt the feel that I was being overtaken, and it was a strong feeling. It was on a on, on, on way to believe it in myself. Last week, I sat here and talked about where I was going to, uh, was this time last year. And well, this time last year, I was in the ring, face to face with Cody Rhodes, and I told him that I wanted to believe at WrestleMania. And I had to believe in myself, but no one's will. And that belief, that belief carried it me into WrestleMania, the belief that what carried me through the, my entire career. So yes, I still believe what I said. Like I said last week, I am a contender and I will become champion of Jackie. And that's pro uh, it's a promise. And I will get there. Uh, it's not going to be an easy path, but it will be a path that I'm willing to take to get there. And if I, I gave it to the feeling uh, every single time. And then the was like, Sadi, what's wrong with you? Are you speaking Japanese saying, like, what's wrong with you? You had the glory, the moments, how you forgotten that, but you act like in misery, you want people's sympathy, such a clever guy, you are just like Cody, but I would love to see you true self in the ring tonight. The real you tries to uh, swindle people and stay in the spotlight, but if you don't uh, let your real emotions out, I will not tolerate it. Your chances is gone, but don't worry, I will pick your soul, continue to war path. Forward, like whatever, whatever. He didn't get another segment. Uh, this time in the ring. Uh, so they did that segment where before the show started, basically. Where I don't know. It is what it is. So we had the Seth Bra So then we had Cody Rhodes. Saying like, next we in Tucky. We guys like to talk about. Oh Lord. He says. I believe that, uh, I believe that we, uh, that we could talk about how, in the main event of WrestleMania, I will be challenging for the undisputed WWE World Heavyweight Championship against Roman Reigns. Took me a while to say that, but the only reason I'm able to say that is because of you guys. And again, it just makes you think that, again, why did you say in the first place that you didn't want to face Roman at WrestleMania? Like, where is that explanation? Whatever. You guys certainly made your voices heard. A full week trending worldwide, posting about it and screaming about it, shouting about it, whispering, spreading the world. And the, the word was, we want Cody. Thank you. I really don't know how I can repay you. Actually, maybe there is one way. And oh man, y'all making a bit emotional, but I get it. I'm, I'm a passionate guy. I'm a passionate about this place. My legacy went in it. My astronomical sign is a cancer. I'm often, you know, wearing my heart on my sleeve. But again, I don't want to get emotional because I want. I don't. I would become a crybaby. That's saying the whole cry, big holy crybaby chant. Um, well, all you chant, we want Kennedy. There was one man out there who absolutely hundred percent did not want to hear it. That man happens to be the most famous human being alive, a potential presidential nominee, the original people's champion, the same man who coined the term Cody Crybabies. Let's take a look at this. And then um, we do see uh, some of the fans like have like, oh, I'm a Cody Crybaby. If you take a proud of, uh, if you take pride be a Cody Crybaby, you're a fucking faggot. That's all I have to say. Seriously. We see, they show the ESPN interview of the, on the Pat McAfee show with The Rock saying, you know, a bunch of Cody Crybabies, you know, how, how a bunch of sparks like the fucking Chicken McNuggets and all that kind of shit. How they're a bunch of fat neck ears and shit like that. Um, and, he sa and he then says, uh, listen, I know promos are different from the last time he, were, he, he was here. And very few people could not fan, could even fan the matching the rock on a microphone. But I have to ask, what are we su supposed to do with the nuggets? Uh, and then basic, and it's like, you know, what are we supposed to do with the nuggets? I don't know, maybe don't eat them? Maybe don't buy them? 
Maybe don't shove it up your ass. There are fucking weird people out there. <laughs> uh, Pat, like, Pat, you were there. What am I supposed to do with the, nu with the nuggets? Oh my god, please don't mistake the levity of the candor here for any weekend. Oh, so yeah, Pat Max is like, I don't know, just don't show it up your ass. It's like, is he not wrong? Um, is it, I'm, I'm please, uh, don't think I'm not a fan of The Rock. I am a fan of The Rock. I have, uh, I think all of us have been, uh, times, uh, uh, our lives that we are fans of The Rock. Because get it, all the fucking smarts now are fucking booing The Rock. I can't imagine that, you know, this makes me think. All these ads and era legends, like The Rock, they're getting booed. But you're gonna fuck it, these fucking smarks, they, they have the audacity to boo The Rock. But then, like what? If Stone Cold comes, comes back, did the same shit, you're gonna boo him too? You're gonna boo The Undertaker? Like, these fans, I swear to God, are crybaby bitches. Because you guys would fucking boo... Like, any top star that comes back to try to fucking save this fucking shit. Because let's be honest here, no one really cares much about Cody. Okay? No one does. The only fucking are cheering this way is because, get it? You know, it's a fucking opposite reaction to a part-timer type of shit. Because these fucking smarts, like, fucking like to fucking see stupid shit. They hate, they're, they're failures, you know, they're losers. They're not the cool people here, but they want to see Cody Rhodes instead of a guy who's cool, you know? Well, one thing The Rock doesn't did not do well is that he is that is he doesn't listen. And at the press conference, I said nothing to defy his ancestry, but yet he chose to slap me in the face and a slap that uh, slap me in the face in public. Sometimes you can't you, you could hear the rivers overflowing. I recognize the look of The Rock's eyes, and that's no longer the people's energy. The Rock and Roman Reigns together is a there's a perfect storm. of please make no mistake about it. Rock, you put your hands on me. Rock, you slap me across the face. And what that means, I'm going to hit you back. Um, he said, absolutely take a bow. And before we, uh, we get started with whatever this is, please allow me to thank you for coming to my aid, uh, aid in the press conference. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. He said to Rollins, because Rollins comes out. Rollins says, well, ah. Yeah, what can I uh, say except that you're welcome. First off, Cody, as much as I'm looking forward to defending the World Heavyweight Championship against you at WrestleMania, I understand your decision. I understand why you picked Roman Reigns. I understand why you need the, uh, why you needed a, a Roman's title. You gotta finish the story, right? But there's a million people around the world want you to finish the story. Now that the decision has been made, let me make this very clear to you. You need to finish your story. You need to finish your story for yourself, for your dad, every single person here tonight. And I'm telling you because you, if you don't not be Roman Reigns and take the understanding time with him, the landscape of the underside of WrestleMania is very dark. You got a very, you got a very powerful champion of my era, Roman Reigns. He gets more power. He gets more leverage. Which means he shows up less, and he defends his house less. The glass ceiling is getting thicker. Those brass rings, are, they got higher. With that logic, shouldn't you want to fucking challenge Roman Reigns? Seth, like, this is why, like, I would not have mine necessarily, instead of fucking Rollins defending his title against some fucking re retard at the winner of the Chamber pay-per-view, like, I would like to honestly see, like, maybe Rollins fucking faces, I don't know, he, he, they turned his back to a triple threat, instead of the match being, like, the same match as last year, unless they turned that to some sort of situation, because I do think, again, one world title being on both shows is good enough, they don't need a world, uh, and maybe they could replace the world, the fucking WWE title, like, Raptor, like, they fucking have a winner take all. Like, what are you going to do the World Heavyweight title? They could, You could rename the fucking WWE title as the World, WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Simple. You know? Just that name for the title. The WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Well, Undisputed WWE World Heavyweight Championship. There you go. That could be the fucking title name. And it could be Seth Rollins' title where you fucking have the champion fucking... That's the title to be fucking representing WWE. Like, you could do that. 
You know what I mean? Um, other than that, like, seriously, like, I don't know, man. It just, like, it's fucking, ugh, like, who the f with that logic, again, who the fuck cares about the second world title now? Who the fuck cares? You know, you. Uh, I understand Roman buried it. But it's like, this title, like, it's not raw. Like, it's sad he is the loser bracket title. So why the f How the fuck could it make any fucking sense or matter anyways? And the only way that title will matter is that, let's be honest here, it, it never mattered in the first place. It didn't make any sense in the first place just because they'll get a Roman s schedule and whatever. What they should have done, essentially, is again, like, I don't know, wait till fucking Roman loses this year? Because they might try to do that now, where Roman fucking pro uh, most likely is going to probably lose now, this year. So I don't fucking get it. I, I don't. I really don't. Just fucking have Cody win the fucking title. Well, I mean, I don't want to see that, really, but it's like, whatever. In the end of the day, that's what they're going to fucking do. So I can't really be surprised, and I can't really be fucking angry. You know what I mean? Regardless of that, fucking Cody, uh, yeah, whatever. Cody's gonna be fucking, you know, whatever. Um, the only way they can really make the world title matter, honestly, is that if some sort of way, what they're gonna probably, what they might have to do, is they're gonna have to do eventually a Reigns and Rollins feud. Uh, another one. And in all honesty, maybe they might do that where if Reigns comes back after a little hiatus after losing WrestleMania, he has to face fucking Rollins and then at least a him versus Cody for like a unification type of shit. That's the only way it fucking works. You know, if Reigns was to win the World Heavyweight title. Okay? Or even The Rock. Let's say if The Rock joins the chamber match. And then he fucking wins and defeats uh, fucking Rollins. That's the only way I can see the title actually fucking matter or matter a bit. Like it or not, you need the top or you need the bigger stars to establish the title look prestigious. And and the titles have to main event at times more than the fucking WWE title. It hasn't done that yet. It literally would either open the show or fucking be like it would not even matter to be the point to be I mean if that's also the problem like a world title shouldn't have to take a back seat on any fucking title you know and that's the problem with two world championships like at least when back in the day when you did have two world champions it somewhat mattered when you did champion versus champion matches without titles on the line right when it fucking because, again, back in the day, you had bigger stars. You established the titles better. Again, when Triple H was the World Heavyweight Champion, the first World Champion for Raw when you, brought, when you had the World Heavyweight Championship, the big goal, it, became, it mattered when a guy like him was champion, you helped establish the title means something, then guys like Michaels won it, and then all these other great wrestlers that won it. It matters so much, like, wow, this, it, it mattered. You know, wow, this is the title fucking at Raw that makes sense and, care, and people care for it. And it made event it at times more than the WWE title. That is the problem. Like, you, you're always going to know that if fucking Reigns is champion, the title's not going to main event the show. Ever. It, it, was, it was cursed in the beginning. You fucking had the title open the, sh the first exception of the title. It opened the show as the World Championship. The fucking world, first World Championship match. At back in what? Night of Champions. It was the first match of the show. Without main eventing or whatever. And that was like a, a title on the line. That was like the only title on the line on that show, I believe. I don't know. And then yet that title fucking did not main event the show. And that was a World Championship. What does that fucking tell you? From the beginning, who the fuck cares? <sighs> whatever, man. This is probably gonna be any uh, the last real chance that anyone's have to take that title, to take the power and give it back to the people. You might be the man with a job, but Cody, what's your plan? Because last year you got screwed over out of the title to me by WrestleMania. The Usos were there, Paul Heyman, Solo Sokola, Roman Reigns. 
You're gonna get uh, the job done, but you fought your way back. Won the rumble again. The deck is stacked against you the same, and now the bar has been raised. You're not dealing with just Heyman, the solos, Jimmy, and Roman. You're dealing with the biggest star, the biggest, uh, the most influential man of, in the entertainment industry. You gotta deal with The Rock. Lexin, I tend to agree with you, which is why I come here, Cody, to tell you that you don't have to fight this mat, uh, f battle alone. Now, you and I have, uh, all, haven't always seen eye to eye, but a couple weeks back, you told Roman Reigns that you didn't want to uh, take the, his title from him. You want to take everything from him, and deep in my soul, I felt that. That is why the press conference where The Rock put his hands on you, I stepped up because I'm sick and tired of The Rock. People like Roman Reigns. These arrogant and tired of pricks that can uh, do whatever they want. They can throw our weight around. They can make decisions without and no consequences. Well, motherfucker. With that argument, that is fucking bullshit. Because you're literally backed by the system. You're backed by fucking Triple H. That is why you have not lost your title yet. So that's a bunch of bullshit. What, what Rollins is saying, because you're literally backed by Triple H. That is why you haven't lost your fucking title. When literally a guy gets injured, which let's be honest here, the most realistic scenario is fucking Rollins. Should not be world champion, honestly. He, he's injured still. Watch at WrestleMania. If he tries to wrestle, he might have a better chance of sadly getting injured again. Which I don't want to see. I'm not trying to root for the guy's fucking downfall. But that's what's sadly going to happen. Come on here. That's most likely what's going to happen. Him getting hurt. Maybe in a match might be... Whatever match he has with who, it will turn out to be a failure. And I'll say uh, the, the Rock and Roman are backed by uh, you know, the entire pricks. Well, guess what? That is some bullshit. Saying that guy like The Rock, they're, they're trying to make... I understand like The Rock, they're doing like a heelish type of shit now with him. But it's like, come on here. You're going to say they're entitled when literally The Rock doesn't need to do this. But he came back to the foot of fucking fans. But yeah, the fucking crybaby bitches have to fucking ruin it for The Rock and shit like that. But like, come on. Who the fuck cares? These people are what matter more than your stupid punk ass. Ay, ay, ay. I'm saying a time of them getting away with it. But I gotta admit something. That you're right now. The man Roman Reigns uh, is, is partly my fault. Nearly 10, 12 years ago, he cut, we came down the uh, stairs in the tactical vest. We were brothers. We fought, uh, we forged by the same fire. But I taught him everything I know. I'm probably responsible for the man he became. Because I couldn't imagine the monster became. But now the monster has got two heads. Because he's standing side by side with the only person on this planet who is so entitled and selfish as he is. But when it comes to finding a bloodline, when it comes to finding the rock, when it comes to finding Roman Reigns, the only man on earth who is likely suited to be your shield, I'll give you a hint. He's an architect, a visionary, a little nursery. He has Sam Hicken Rollins. So now we see a little alliance forming with Rollins and Cody, which if you didn't notice at WWE's latest video or some commercial they're doing, I think that was a commercial they did for the Super Bowl. Apparently that commercial aired during the Super Bowl. I'm not sure exactly because I didn't watch uh, like the first... I mean, I tried watching the entire Super Bowl, but, like, the thing is, like, I came home at a certain time because I was at the gym still, and then I came home at 7 and whatever. I guess the Super Bowl played, like, the commercial played around whatever time. I, I'm not going to act like I paid attention to see the commercial, but apparently this played on the commercial where it was Rock, Roman side-by-side, side, and Cody and Seth side-by-side, side, and they tease basically some sort of lies with each of them based on the press conference and it led to maybe I didn't believe that they might do a tag match at night one at Wrestlemania and I have no problem with it it is the biggest match to do and honestly doing a tag team match with them it is a big way to it is a little throwback to the original Wrestlemania after all this is 40 years doing a tag match there it's not a problem. But the problem is, is like, what? You're going to have Rock and Roman getting pinned by Rollins and Seth? Which I don't want to see. It just got to lead to something that makes sense. You know what I mean? 
I don't know. Like, in that match, like, Rock and Roman need to win. Like, you know, it's like they're the, mega, they're the two-man power trip that they should be, you know? And obviously, the two-man power trip of them should fucking be, like, taking over the fucking show. You know what I mean? That'd be fucking awesome. <laughs> you know, I would like them to see that. Let them win all the gold. Imagine Rock and Roman are both like, the world champions after WrestleMania. I would love to see that. Let Rock fucking overtake his power and become a champion. Take Rollins' title. I would not mind that. Anyway, so third match. Anyway, that happened. I mean, whatever. I don't hate it, but it's like I don't really care at the same time because I just think it's just a bunch of bullshit that Rollins said too. It's like, motherfucker, you're guilty of being backed by this fucking system with no consequences. You got injured! And you're still injured. Like, come on here. The third match. Liv Morgan defeats Zoe Starks for the women's elimination qualifier match. Whatever. Good for Liv Morgan. She's hot. Okay? She's going to invite the maybe black cat. Again, going back to this whole fucking chamber shit. Again, this pay-per-view happen is happening at the chamber. I mean, whatever, in Australia. Imagine you're an international fan and you won't see The Rock and Roman Reigns. Like, what kind of shit is that? And not just that. There's no world champion inside the fucking chamber. Like, what kind of shit is that? Seriously. I feel bad for these international fans. Fourth match. Before the match, we see R-Truth confronted by Damien Priest. He still acts like he's fucking part of Judgment Day. And then uh, Damien Priest says, like, Truth, you know, you're a funny guy. We had time together, but man, you got, uh, you know... I gotta tell you, there's no test, man. You know, unless you get in the ring once again, you're just gonna be in execution because we don't like you and we don't wanna, you know, you got, you're not, whatever. So, with that shit, that means, like, who the fuck really cares to see or, like, Judgment Day by himself? It would've been kinda cool, like, if, if Larry was actually part of Judgment Day just being a fucking comedy act shit and it just eventually turned on him. I mean, whatever. It's just like, in the end of the day, like, he was the only reason why people could be... In my honest opinion, that was the only reason why someone cared for the Judgment Day. Because let's be honest, who the fuck cares about the Judgment Day? They're just we're a boring faction that's got it. We're young guys that we're, we're not going to hurt people. Wow, I'm very intrigued. And the only thing I'm intrigued about them was literally facing Edge. Like, that's it. Anyways... Before his match with J.D. McDoofy had McGee, he was, like, worried, like, you know, Dog, they're gonna kill me, dog. Man, you're, you're probably right, man. You're gonna kill me, man. She. Y'all come me back when you come back, man. Then Truth loses to J.D. McDoofy head in that fourth match. And then, yeah, he, he lost. And then, yeah, we see... We see, like, Truth is cornered. I mean, he's kind of sad, also, like... You know, get it? Wasn't Finn Balor and Dominique supposed to like our truth? You know, I would see like, well, why not? It'd be JD McDoofy had more of a problem. I don't know. For some reason, they attacked him. I mean, I would kind of. It would been funny, like to see why not Finn Balor and Dominic been okay with him being part of the group. I don't know. But that didn't happen, sadly. Un unless they, the, the only way that would make sense of what they, if, what would lead to our troop fighting back is like if the Miz got involved. You know what I mean? And like the Miz, like all oh, get it, like he's saying deep down, it's like obviously it'd be a rip off to the whole bloodline Sami Zayn thing, like all oh, the how betrayal shit. But it's like that would only be a way to make sense of this, like so much our troop turning on, on that, or just the whole feud building. Because that's like, look, look, that's the sad thing. It looks like they're going to try to do Miz and our truth or Awesome Truth, as they call it. They're going to pat them face the Judgment Day for the tag titles. And the sad thing is that I, I never thought I would say that I'm, I'm intrigued of seeing the Miz at a WrestleMania doing something. But like that's necessarily the only way that someone makes sense for what they have to do. And isn't that sad that that shit, when they're supposed to face a serious tag team or faction that they're the guys that should be dethroning fucking the judgment day isn't that sad i don't know i don't care i don't care really but i don't really hate it at the same time but it's just like it's whatever you know what i mean whatever you know our 
truth is somewhat funny, I get, you know? So. I was expecting The Miz to come out because he was getting beat, but Audrey got beat up after trying to fight back against the Judgment Day. This was no test, he realized it, but he tries to fight back after getting attacked. But then DUI, or DIY, whatever, they come out and save our troop because The Miz called them or whatever. It's like, whatever. Cody Rhodes runs to the Sami Zayn back, so he says, you know, Cody thanks Sammy for having his back last week and during his match with Nakamura. Sammy says he always has Cody's back, and Cody believes in Sammy, and most importantly, the WWE Universe believes in him. Becky Lynch comes out to the man is coming out to Kentucky. You know, I say this very interesting sign over here, pointing to the fucking uh, whatever. She says, I guess I'm going to prom in 2034. I don't know how that, I don't know, some fucking sign. Yeah, officially in the world of WrestleMania. It's been crazy, it's been a while chaotic. And I've been crazy at times, but unpredictable. I love that this business, uh, over the 15 years I step in the ring. I'm obsessed, I have a sense of the obsession of great at times, and most of the time that I've been able to travel the world, the reason why I'm in front of you people. And I, the reason why, you know, I failed gym, the first, the girl, the same girl failed gym class, became the first woman to reign around WrestleMania. And I met my husband. I had my daughter. I love you. I love this obsession. You know, I miss birthdays, weddings. I even miss my father's funeral. Which, that's pretty sad to mention. God damn. And my daughter's only three, but I already had a difficult, difficult conversation with her about this. But there are times like, I have to explain why, my, why your mother is bloody at times. And why she, her shoulders hurt and she can't pick you up and all this type of shit, whatever. She mentioned that, but then like, oh, I have to also mention why your mother's gonna get hurt in the elimination chamber, or whatever. And then she said that, and then she said that, oh, a lot of you love mommy, but the thing is, mommy's gonna realize that I, she's gonna get loose. Is it, again? What is the point of this chamber match when you kind of already know that? Tell me that Becky Lynch is not winning. Well, well, Becky Lynch, tell me not winning. Because what kind of shit would it make? That fucking Becky Lynch wins the, loses this match after this whole supposed so build and hype. Like, what are they gonna do? You know what I mean? I don't know, man. It's just like you, you. Well, I don't know. What's the point of this chamber shit, honestly? Um, now Jack comes out. It's like Becky. I just want to come out to talk to you to say that uh, you know I'm just gonna win. I, you know, I hope you're gonna win. You know, I know I just hope to be a mother like you. Probably because she can't fucking, I don't know, her mother will fucking, I don't know. The child won't fucking make it through the fucking hole. That's a sad thing, right? <laughs> Anyways, fucking, uh, now he just he gets fake emotional. Like, I hope I'll be a mother like you, but I hope to face you in WrestleMania because, you know, I'm going to knock you out or something. And then Rhea Blue comes out, then she basically beats up Nia Jax, got her revenge and shit, and I don't care. Um, Yeah. Uh, Jackie Redman of interviews McIntyre says, like, you know, I will have a match with Cody Rhodes next week, but I feel that be one step closer to getting the world championship. I feel like I give the fans what they wanted. The reason why Cody made the decision, whether Cody wants the, uh, the chamber or, or wants, uh, or believes in not, that I call the Rollins selfish. Who's a bad guy here? Who questions his motives? He, uh, you know, he's the underdog. He beats the 80 stars to qualify for the Elimination Chamber. Yeah, I'm doing this the right way. And uh, Cody, you know, takes his match. You're the last person Cody wants to deal with this. I don't know. Just like CM Punk. I don't know. Whatever. He mentioned, like, I got He beats Sty uh, Styles and he's going to finish his dream or something, you know. LA Knight defeats Ivar. I just, you know, it makes no sense. Like, Styles did not get involved in this match. Like, what's the point of these qualifying matches? And also, what's the point of these chamber qualifiers when they're not establishing stories and they're not having people who have an issue with each other in the match? Why isn't Styles in the fucking match if LA Knight's going to be in the match? You know what I mean? Like, why aren't you guys doing stuff with feuds? I don't know. Same thing with Sami Zayn. Like, why is Sami Zayn not in the chamber match? I'm not saying Orton... Like, first of all, why are you having, like, Orton versus Sami Zayn happen? Why you have fucking Styles versus McIntyre when those people should be in the chamber match? Same thing with Orton and Sami. And, uh, like, I don't know, man. I don't fucking get it. Like, those are, like, the people that sound like they should be in the chamber match. 
Whatever, man. Whatever. You can see Chelsea Green interrupt. Oh yeah, again it next. Oh yeah, next week is an announcement. The Judgment Day will face R True Miz and DUI. Whatever. And there will be a last chance battle royal. The winner gets the final spot in the women's championship. Who the fuck cares? And Chelsea Green like. Did I just heard it's a battle royal and something? And then she complains a lot about her management. And then all the she hulks come involved. They want a shot and blah, blah, blah. And Adam Pierce getting his thing is like, he needs a drink. Okay, great. Drink yourself the fucking... I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't want to be too graphic. Just say that whatever happens, it doesn't matter if you're on the show or not. No hope will be lost. I'm just kidding. All hope, no hope will be lost. Just kidding, you know? So it's like, who the fuck cares? Who, I'm still thinking to myself, who the fuck is Adam Pierce? That's all I have to say. We still are questioning that to this day. It's like, oh, but he's there for, he's been, he's just known as that guy, does get it? He's for some reason has some management uh, fucking plan. Like, he's apparently upper management. We have to pretend that this guy is some fucking authority figure just because he's been there for some long time and, like, who the fuck cares? You know what I mean? In the main event, Nakamura defeats Sami Zayn. No one fucking cares. This match was just a throwback to their stupid takeover shit. And I don't care. This match started 30, 10 30, and I don't care. And then it just was boring as fuck. And then eventually fucking McIntyre costs Sammy the match. And who the fuck cares? And then Cody goes about to save the fucking day and that's how the show ends. And I don't care. Very boring show. Nothing happened, man. Oh, but Cody and Seth. But it's like, wow. One fucking segment. And it's like, who the fuck cares at the same fucking time? And it's just a bunch of bullshit too. This show is boring. Fuck this show. Until next time. Peace. Yeah, bye. There ain't no love for this shit. It's a season of love, ladies and gentlemen. There ain't no loving for this fucking show. That's for damn sure, alright? Get your gauge closed by Nancy Spy missing bitches go, oh shit, oh shit for Valentine's Day. Give them a uh, if you, you know, Valentine's Day is coming up. Give a chick on a Coca Cola stylish glass. She'll shut up and you you know have a good time, okay? That's all I have to say. Till next time, peace. Yeah, bye. <laughs>